Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Honest Toll Making. And today we are gonna talk about <laughs> uh, Mason's birth story. He's sitting right here in front of me, smiling so big. Uh, oh, spit bubbles, you're still drooling. We still don't have any bins. Hi, do you love your mommy? You love your mommy so much, huh? Yes. Mommy loves you so much. Yes, I do. Oh my goodness. He is almost three months old, and I haven't done his birth story yet. <laughs> uh, it's something that I keep wanting to do because I'm afraid that I'm going to forget everything that happened. And it was kind of, you know, kind of an interesting story. Yeah. And he loves to hear me talk, so he's going to, he's probably the only one in the world, but he loves to hear me talk. So he's probably going to keep making these happy baby noises. Yeah. Right on cue, huh? At the hospital that we were going to, they only induced on Saturdays. So I would have ended up going to 40 weeks before I could have been induced. And I was one day from turning 39 weeks, and... I went to bed that night, <clears throat> yes I did, and when I went to bed that night, I, I made a comment to Chris that I noticed the baby wasn't moving like he normally does. We went to bed that night and I made the comment to Chris that I noticed that the baby hadn't been moving very much, which I thought was strange, but I had had a really busy day working around the house, trying to get things ready, and I was... You know, I thought maybe I just hadn't noticed it, but usually when I lay down is when he's most active. So I lay down and waited for him to move. <laughs> and he just, I didn't feel him moving. So I went to sleep and I woke up at like three or four o'clock in the morning and I just, I couldn't sleep because I wasn't feeling him moving. I had started, you know, poking around on my belly, jiggling him a little bit. Uh, I tried different positions, and at that point, I was starting to really get freaked out. I texted our midwife, who actually happens to be our friend, so um, as soon as I texted her, she said to try drinking something cold and to take a hot shower and, you know, try, try all the things. So I had some cold apple juice. And when the apple juice didn't do anything, I gave that probably 20, 15, 20 minutes. Nothing happened. And then I got in the hot bathtub. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Of course, Leo needs to play too. And I got in the bathtub and the water was nice and warm. And I, you know, had the shower spraying on my belly. See, this is why he's playing. You've got little bros. Best with the shower spraying down and the hot water on him, he still didn't start moving. This was, it was a horrible morning. And as I'm surrounded by all of this happiness, I, uh, you know, I'm very thankful. Nothing I was doing was working to make this baby move. And I had all of these horrible thoughts in my head, you know, and so my midwife said to come to the hospital. And on the way to the hospital, which, by the way, was an hour and a half away, which was one of the longest and most miserable car rides in my entire life. Um, on the way to the hospital, she texted and said, actually, just go straight to ultrasound so that they can look at him and, and monitor him and see what's going on. So I go to ultrasound, and they check him, and I, I hear his heartbeat. And then I immediately feel just a thousand times better because I didn't know what I was going to find out. And I had to go in there by myself because Chris was in the vehicle with Leo. And if something was wrong, I didn't want, you know, Leo to be in the room. And so I hear his heartbeat and I immediately feel better. But they have to do, I don't remember what it's called right now. It's a test where the baby has to perform so many things within a certain amount of time. And he needed to move. He needed to move a certain amount of times. He needed to have a flexion, which she said was an extension of an arm or a leg. Uh, he needed to practice breathing. And he needed to have good fluid levels. 
So he, in the 30 minutes, he practiced breathing and he had good fluid levels, but he was not moving like he should have been. He had no flexion. He failed the test that they had been giving him and I knew that he was okay. He was alive, which was, you know, a huge relief. But, you know, there still was something wrong because he wasn't moving. So I go over to the midwife office, which is right next door. He's right next door. He just distracts me so much. He's so cute. You distract me. You're so cute. We go to the midwife's office, and she says, you're going to have a baby today. And I said, uh, well, you know, he had, his heart rate was good and stuff. And she said, yeah, but he, he just isn't moving. And I said, well, what would cause that? And she said, we don't know. She said, but we need to get him out right now. And I immediately thought, emergency C-section. <laughs> but that was not the case, thank goodness. I had had all of my other babies vaginally, and I wanted to have this one vaginally. So we, the whole time I'm thinking C-section. Like, uh, she didn't have the chance to clarify because she said, you're going to the hospital right now. So we went to the hospital. I was already like two and a half or three centimeters dilated. Yes, I was. And like 80% effaced. So as soon as we got there, the midwife that was on call checked me. Because my midwife <laughs> had to stay and do her regular daily appointments. So... The midwife checked me, and she said everything looks good. They had already hooked the baby up to the monitors, so they could we could hear his heart rate. And he just he was not moving very much. The on-call midwife wanted to break my water at one point because she thought that would speed things up. And you know they have this little hook. I've had my water broken now every time. And she snagged it a little because she got some fluid out, but she said his head was so low that she didn't want to tr risk scratching him. So I just sat there kind of and waited for it to pop. Uh, where she snagged it a little, it, she said that I, it would pop on its own with, with the contractions I was having. I was having very strong contractions, like because when you have Pitocin, it's, it says they give you you know, more intense contractions, and they were really going up and down. And then with one of the contractions, she was right. It just popped and gushed everywhere. I had so much fluid. It just kept, you know, they put you on those, I call them pee pads, the doggy pee pads. They put the, them under you, and I had like four spread out because, you know, when you go to, when they go to break your water, it's a lot. And we ended up having to change those, I think probably probably like five or six times. We finally get everything settled in and I think that this is going to be a long, like a day worth of labor because that's normally my first pregnancy, my labor was 24 hours and I've been induced every time. So from the time they started my induction process until Alex was born, it was 24 exactly hours. and. 24 exactly hours? It was exactly 24 hours. When I had Zach, it was 16 hours. When I had Leo, it was 12 hours. And so I figured that I, it would it'd be at least 12 or so hours. Well, I start having contractions and everything's good and I think I'm gonna tough it out as long as I can. Um, they check me a couple hours later and I'm at like a four and a half. So it's, you know, it's progressing, but it's slow. Um, they tell me to try to rest, of course, you know, all the things that they tell you to do. And when she checked me the one time, I, I was like four and a half centimeters. So I barely, she said maybe four or five is what she had said. And I was like, okay, things are moving, but they're not going that fast. Well, I started having more contractions. Sarah got off work, and she came, and she was sitting with me. And I don't know if my body had just been waiting on her or what, because I feel so comfortable with her. She delivered Leo, and she's just, she's one of my dearest friends. So she got there after work, and my body started having a lot more painful contractions. And I was like, I'm only at a four, maybe five. Um, you know, I'm not a wuss. <laughs> what is happening? And so I'm like, 
Whew, to get through my contractions. She's holding my hand. I'm squeezing her hand. And she said, I think we probably should call for your epidural. Called for my epidural. You have to have fluid. I had already had the fluid, thank goodness. And then he came, uh, the guy came to do my epidural in like 15 minutes. So it had been like 30 minutes since I'd been checked. And while he was giving me my epidural, I uh, was having such painful contractions. Even the uh, anesthesiologist was like, we probably need to back, back off on the Pitocin a little bit because she is just banging out those contractions. And they were just so close together that I was hardly getting any break. But the miracle that is an epidural kicked in and I felt amazing. It's crazy how even though it kicks in so quickly, it feels like a long time when you're going through it. When you're having those contractions and you're in pain and agony and you're crying. and Actually, I don't think I cried, but I was very close. When he got done with my epidural, she checked me and I was at nine. So they immediately start tearing apart the room because there's things that, you know, you know a room has to be set up, the bed has to be converted. And so they're taking apart stuff and people are flying in and out and I had gone from like a, a four, maybe five, to a nine in 30 minutes. And but then I ended up having to push for like an hour because somebody had a very big head. I don't know where I got that. Daddy and mommy both have giant heads. Uh, so I pushed for like an hour and then he was born at 1032. And when he came out, he was completely perfect. And when I found out after I had the epidural that I had gone to a nine that quickly, I almost regretted getting the epidural because I think that that also is what made it take so long to push him out. He had a big head, yes, but also I was so numb from the epidural, just dead, dead from like the chest down. So he's getting a little grouchy. We're going to have to wrap this up, but that was my birth story with Mason. Thank God everything was okay because, you know, I had, I was thinking the worst the entire time. Unfortunately, because of the way that it happened, none of my family got to be there. Um, but, you know, it was just me, Chris, and Sarah again, and that was, that was nice. We did that with Leo, and then we, we ended up doing the same thing this time. But that was my birth story with Mason. Mason James, born on August 13th at 10.32 p.m. He was 8 pounds, 2 ounces, 20 and a half inches long. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did because Mason is super cute. And I will see you guys in my next video. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to go ahead and subscribe because I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been putting up videos regularly. What? I know. I feel, like I said, I feel much more like myself. Also, my subscriber count has uh, been increasing actually pretty quickly. I know that I have quite a few new people, so I just want to take a second to say welcome to my channel. I am so happy to see you. I'm so happy to have you. I hope that you will be able to see my true heart in these videos. I try to be very open and honest with you. Um, I try to share the real, real life struggles as well as, you know, I want to share the good stuff as well as the hard stuff. So. I hope that that comes through and you're able to see that I really am sharing the real life with you. The real life, like like not the fake one. So I wanted to ask if you have any questions. I am going to be doing like a Q&A video or like a get to know me kind of video because like I said, I've had quite a few new subscribers and you know, you may have some questions. So leave your questions down below. I already have a few that I've been uh, keeping track of, so you can also leave me questions on Instagram. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!